So Raw Monday Night was the first show in months with no football competition. It was the 30th anniversary show. And it did the biggest number in three years. The 30th anniversary show. First hour. 2.64 million viewers. And a point eight in 18 to 49. It did have one of the biggest first to third hour drops in the show's history. But as bad as that sounds, it's not that bad because... Number, I mean, it dropped because the first hour was so freaking high because it was commercial free. And then, of course, when you add commercials, you know, the more commercials you have in an hour, the more people tune out. And they, you know, it's not like you get a free ride when you do an hour of no commercials. What happens is you need to put all of those commercials that you did not have in the first hour in the second hour and the third hour. So the second and third hour end up having uh, even more commercials than ever. And so that that hurts the rating. But the second hour still did 2.37 million viewers. And the third hour still did 2.02 million viewers. So uh, it did a a very, very good number. Tons of people saw the bloodline trial of Sami Zayn. It was number one on television in 1849. It even beat The Bachelor on ABC. Whoa. We're not even talking about number one on cable. We're talking cable and broadcast television. Raw was number one. They beat Univision and Telemundo. They beat ABC. They beat CBS. The number two show. The number two show on cable was a Kansas-Baylor college basketball game. Did 1.2 million and a .36. Raw nearly doubled the number two show on cable. Whoa. Won every key demo by a huge margin. Huge. Except. Except. Women 18 to 49. Well. That, that, that below saying. deck Mediterranean, let me tell you. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You yeah. Like that you one? heard that right. Number one, period. Number one on all of TV. Well. It's a big number. Yeah. Too bad the ad rates can't reflect that. Literally, oh, they're doing all right, brother. Literally, the last time a I'm show did this well. I'm not crying for them, but let's not act like they're good in Ra- comparison. Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. February 17, 2020 was the last time they did a number close to this. There you go. So there you go. Raw. Not stars. doing too bad. All the stars are here. That's what it was. 30th anniversary, no football. Week fall schedule. There you go. Yeah, but you know what? Set. People always go, well, uh, yeah. Now, granted. That's what they do. They do. They say those exact words. Yeah. Granted, granted, the first hour was commercial free. Yes. But uh, with the exception of a short appearance by Hulk Hogan, the first hour was entirely, entirely current stars. Huh. There were no there was video packages you know, and such. Uh, not that first hour. That first hour was just boom, 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 boom. DX came out in hour two, and it fell. I actually think I may have the quarters here. Brandon Thurston, I think, had the quarters. I can I could tell you who did well and who didn't. All right. Should I do people that? Like that? Yeah. People like I think they'll. Enjoy All right. That. So uh, the uh, the uh, uh, yeah fair Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. But Hulk Hogan came out two and a half million. No. Then the Bloodline current stars came out two point seven six five million. That's how I'm talking about. It dropped a little bit to 2.5 for the beginning of that match, but the uh, the second half of the Jey Uso Sami Zayn versus the Judgment Day when Sami tagged in, 2.756 million. Essentially, everything involving the Bloodline and Sami Zayn tied for the highest rated thing on the show. The biggest thing on TV for the night, the Bloodline and Sami Zayn. Yeah, by far. And then you know it, uh, you know there were kind of a little bit of ups and downs and that sort of thing. The uh, the top of the hours did well, obviously, because the top of the hours always do well. And then uh, the main event, uh, the last last half hour of the show, mm-hmm. uh, did drop below two million. One point, basically one point nine four million for those. Where last. was the most precipitous drop? The most precipitous drop. Yes. Well, it was the uh, second hour when they had like two ad breaks in one quarter. 
because that's what happens. Who suffers with that L, though? Who suffers with it? Yes. Well, we had Seth and the Street Profits versus Imperium, which uh, had two commercial breaks in one 15-minute segment. I'm so not you can't, blaming You Gunther. can't blame them at all. No. That's just what happens. You know, people don't like commercials. No, they don't. My uh, my my three-year-old watches uh, Coca Melon on the iPad, and man, she gets so mad when there's an ad. I don't like ads, she says. Like we don't. None of us do. We'd all rather be watching Mrs. Applebottom. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets. Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her. It's going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> What a crummy show. Oh, wow. wow. What do you want me to do about it? What the? <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.